don't forget to appreciate what you have if you need to be happy be happy right now don't wait till a later date or a specific date to be happy adult friendships are difficult like everybody's busy life is life in it takes an immense amount of planning and consciousness and like saying we have to do this before like a meetup happens in real time that's not on facebook there's a lot of happiness in the world to tap into the same with sadness if you want to be sad you don't need to look too far to find sadness so you are the one that will choose which energy you want to focus on and go with it hi um a few weeks ago i turned 30 actually last month last week of last month i turned 30 and in a sort of commemoration for my 30th birthday, I did a whole series on Instagram and TikTok to kind of like document my thoughts about turning 30, the things I've learned so far, um, how I feel about life in general. <laughs> and some of the points I touched on were my favorite quotes, my advice to my younger self, advice to my future self, my biggest challenges, my biggest regrets, and my thoughts on life after 30. So let's start with from my favorite quotes. I have two actually. The first one is from Aris Ugo's um, Smart Money Woman. That was where I first read it. I'm sure she's not the first person that talked about this quote, save yourself, nobody's coming to save you. And in the context, she placed it on, because it's a financial um, literacy kind of book. It was like, as women, especially in Africa, we grow up um, being trained to become wives. Your parents are taking care of you or your brother, or, like just some form of man in your life as you're growing up. Then you grow up and you go to your husband's house. Your husband's that takes over, taking care of you um, financially. Like, the, at no point in our growing up are we trained to become financially independent. So the book talks about, as an adult woman, you're supposed to be thinking about financial independence. It is nice. It's actually very good to have your own money. And it's also good to have somebody taking care of you. But there's, it's, it's much better to just have your own money. There's this freedom that comes with that. There's this fulfillment to when you're able to take care of yourself as an adult. And this is something that has always aligned with me. So seeing, in, seeing it in this book was more like an eye-opener, like a, oh, look at it here. More like a deja vu moment. I guess that's why it's one of my favorite quotes. Um, even now, as an adult, I've come to realize that if people are doing things for you, like taking out their time, taking out their money, putting in efforts to do things for you, you, sh you shouldn't be entitled to these things. They are just doing it for you because they love you, not because they owe it to you. Nobody owes you anything, essentially. So that's our that quote. And my second favorite quote, or like one of my favorite quotes, is this one. So it's from my grandmother. And the context I remember I, her telling me this is the day I was going to university or the night I was going to the university, the night before the day I was going to the university, she told me, Ihoma Anana Wabu. And this translates to good things don't finish, good things don't have an expiry date. So she was saying that when I get to school, I should focus on my studies and leave men. Men have sweet mouths. If I leave my studies, I'll focus on them. I might end up not finishing my studies. So, but if I focus on my studies and finish, when I finish, they'll be queuing up for me. And I took this and I ran with it in other areas of my life, especially in finances. I'm the kind of person that if I find something I like now, especially if it's on sale, actually, <laughs> whether it's a bag or even like shares, the stock market, when the stock, when stocks dip or shares in the stock market dip, like there's this pressure to buy in the moment, even when maybe I've exceeded my monthly budget. So that's to try to remove myself from that pressured mindset. I, I tell myself, good things don't have an expiry date. The stock market will always dip and go, dip and go. So this dip is not the end. Yes, um, don't go and borrow money or 
do something you're not supposed to do just to get this thing now, right now, there will always be another thing. If it is a bag, a bag that you really love and it's like, oh, limited edition and all of that. See, let me tell you. There will always be better bags in the future. Whether it's a car, the ones in the future will probably be better than this one now. Unless it's something that you're very sure does not have, um, like the expiry date is like a once in a lifetime kind of opportunity. Aside from those kind of situations, good things don't finish. So yeah, um, my advice to my younger self. I feel like when I was younger, I was more goal oriented. Not that I'm, I'm still goal oriented. It's just that I tended not to appreciate the processes that led to the goal. And now, as a grown up, I've come to realize that, in as much as it's nice, it's very good to reach your goal. But you should also appreciate the skills, the processes that led you to achieve your goal, because those are the things that build character. If you look at it, if there were no processes to get to the goal, then it wouldn't be fun and the whole process wouldn't be fun. So slow down, um, appreciate the process, be in the moment, try to appreciate what you have now, appreciate um, what is, let it be more of um, the happiness of pursuit instead of the pursuit of happiness because there is magic in the process. <laughs> Let's leave that one at that. So my message to my future self is um, you're already doing great. Your dreams will come to pass. Yes, even though you're not where you want to be in the moment, like right now, don't forget to appreciate what you have. Like, savor every moment. If you need to be happy, be happy right now. Don't wait till a later date or a specific date to be happy. Because one thing I've also come to realize, growth, getting old, it, it makes you realize a lot of things, actually. If you want to be happy, there's a lot of happiness in the world to tap into. The same with sadness. If you want to be sad, you don't need to look too far to find sadness. So you are the one that will choose which energy you want to focus on and go with it. Yeah. Um, my biggest challenge so far, and I still think it's an ongoing challenge, maybe because I tended to start focusing on it right now, is um, trying to build more connections. As somebody that is like socially shy, I'm kind of a social recluse. You wouldn't know it if you see me in a gathering. If you see me, you think I'm extroverted. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually an introvert. I like my personal space, but that doesn't mean I don't like having friends. The few friends I have are people that I share very deep connection with. But trying to build in the social media space means you have to be a little bit extroverted. Unless you're one of the few people that, you know, you can just do it on your own or you just blow, go viral on your own. Most of the biggest um, influencers or social media, people in the social media space you don't see them building alone. You need collaborations. You need connections. And how do you do that? You stay inside your house and these things come to you. you know? So I started to do some things, put some steps in place to try to be out there more. Yes, my work, I can do most of my work from the house. But I found that anytime I work from outside, there's just this energy. I don't know if it's the environment or the change of environment or just seeing other people work that that does this thing to me. I just get this motivational boost, like seeing other people hustling, seeing other people's them, you know, the hustle and bustle, the spirit. You just realize um, your goals are achievable. Like if you just put yourself out there, these things will happen for you. So yeah, and one other thing I've done to try to hack my brain to like remove myself from my comfort zone is I'm somebody that when I have a new outfit or new something to wear, to go out, I get excited about going out. So because of that, is either I get something new or I try to rearrange the old things I have in a way that is exciting and kind of new and I look forward to going out actually. So yeah, that is it for my biggest challenge and my biggest regret to date is still ties back to my biggest challenge, which is um, not going out enough. Um, in school, in university, because I realized most of the friends that we have now, at least in my circle, most of the friends that we have 
people that we share very deep connection with are people that we met in school. So I really wish I had been out there more, like I had socially, um, I had socialized more in school. I was a triangle student, the kind of student that goes to class, goes to is is either you're in class or in the hostel or the library or even in church. You get. So I was never all these social events. I would just find one excuse or the other not to attend. It was towards my final year that I actually started going out and people were able to meet me. Like, yes, Facebook has remedied some of that, but still, if I had put myself out there, a lot more would have happened. But it's still not too late. Like, there are still opportunities. It's just that adult friendships are difficult. Like, everybody's busy. Life is life in. You try to shadow meetings. Like, let's hang out. And one thing comes up or the other is either your child is sick or your child needs this or your husband needs that. Or walk overflowed into your shadow. Like, there's always something coming up. So it takes an immense amount of planning and consciousness and like saying we have to do this before like a meetup happens in real time that's not on facebook that's not, that's not on whatsapp or a chatting list and like physical meetup so yeah but in school it didn't have to be like that we didn't have to put too much effort most of us were in the same place at the same time for all of four years so it just happened naturally but now a lot of effort has to be put into that so yeah that was an opportunity means but in as much as they regret, it's a work in progress. It's something that can be worked on. And yes, life after 30. One thing I've come to realize is that with age, you know how I've seen with age comes wisdom. You tend to appreciate things more and you tend to tap into the things you already have and like bring it out in a more refined way, like the gift of perception. Like, I don't know if I should be saying this, but... I've, I've tended to like now be able to perceive things more for what they are, things that I would have taken for granted. So some of the subtle gifts that I have, I've tended to lean in towards them and like kind of refine them in a way that would help me to grow forward as a human being. So yeah, that is that. And then um, even though my life is not, my life at 30 right now is not the way I imagined it would have been. Even my birthday celebration is not exactly the way it would have been. It was actually one of the best birthdays I've ever had. I got a lot of gifts, I got a lot of shout outs. Like my friends made sure I was happy. So yeah, I, I need to dwell on the positive because if I want to dwell on the negative, like there's a lot of things to be sad about. But yeah, um, events in this past few months have made me realize what a strong woman I am. But being somebody that has always been called strong, 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 I've actually introspected and I found that because we are strong, we tend to be like this solid thing, rigid thing that we stand when things happen to us, we just stand, we, we, we let the um, feelings fly over us. It keeps flying over us and the world sees this strong person. But over time, because of all of the pressure on the building, like let's say I'm in building now, because of all of the pressure, one day you just come crashing down and everybody will be shocked thinking, hey, what happened? You used to be so strong. Yes, because I was so strong for a very long time, you could not see the cracks. You did not see the cracks. So, yeah, being strong is a good thing, but in certain occasions, allow yourself to be flexible, allow yourself to, like, be flexible, be malleable, bend over, let's, let the feelings seep into you, feel everything, heal, and then move on. If not, one day you just crumble and... Everybody will just be left to wonder what happened. So I'm grateful to be alive, to be healthy, and have the opportunity to make my life even much better than it is. I know the future has a lot in store for me, even though, like, as a 30-year-old, you didn't, 
you don't imagine that at 30 you still be confused not knowing what step to take but yeah life is actually for the living so the fact that you're alive the fact that there is hope for the living let it be a source of happiness a source of motivation like great things can actually happen in the future so this is a message for myself actually i'm just yeah saying it um a lot has happened a lot has happened recently and i'm not exactly ready to share but at the same time i'm feeling so if you can't see i've been actually inconsistent in posting mostly because i'm going through a lot and if i was not putting out content well, even though i'm I'm, I'm going through a lot. I'm putting out more content on Instagram and TikTok because it's short for me, it's easier. But anytime I come here and I want to talk, like I start feeling all of these feels. I start going through emotions and I'm not ready to share yet. So, well, like I just keep hoping that I'll be more consistent in putting out content that inspires and I, I would like to be out there so if you've watched this part thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next one